Welcome to the heart of medieval Limerick City, guys. That's King John's Castle over there. It dates back to 922 when the Vikings lived here. Vikings, I tell you. But I tell you, it's been the host of many of a siege of Limerick. But I'm bringing you to a different battlefield where the modern day warrior stands shoulder to shoulder with 25,000 fans screaming them on. And I've been that fan on many occasions. Guys, there is nobody more excited about this episode than me. Look, there's tourists everywhere. How are you doing, guys? This is going to be an absolute epic series. Trust me, Trevo travels right here in Limerick City. So guys, here we are. You've no idea how excited I am. Toman Park, and boy have we got some cracking people lined up to meet. Wait till you get a load of this. John, how are we doing? How's things? How are you, Paul? You're very welcome to Toman Park. Thank you. I tell you, it's like, like I said, it's like a kid in a candy shop here for me. It's the, one of the biggest European rugby stadiums, and it's, I'm just so excited about this. Access all areas? Access all areas. We're delighted to have you here cooking up a storm at Toman Park. Brilliant. Will we head on in, Toe? Sure. Brilliant. Thank you. Here we are, lads, in the museum. And here's the man himself, Johnny. Hi, Great to see you, man. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. You're very welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Leave you out of voice. John, you're a gent. Yeah. Thank you Thanks, very much. John. Guys, one of my best mates, Johnny Lacey, who's going refing in this year's World Cup. But we're going to get to that in a few minutes. Johnny, right here in the museum with so much history, so much tradition. Yeah, this, uh, as I said, this is the recently refurbished museum here in Thoman Park. A wonderful facility and a great tourist attraction here in Limerick. Because you Monster. do a lot of tours in here, don't you? Is that a Hu Huge there? amount of tours. Yeah. A lot of people from all over the world come to visit the iconic Thoman Park and the museum is a part of the experience. Right, Paolo, this is what it's all about. This is the Holy Grail, the Michelin star of, Heineken, of European it. rugby. These are our two wow. trophies that Munster thankfully won in 2006 and 2008. So great memories, great, great times. Yeah. Um, thinking of memories, obviously Munster here played the All Blacks, the, the iconic All Blacks known all around the world. And in 1978, they came to play Munster in the famous Thoman Park. And obviously, as you can see, Munster won 12 nil. So that, that game is famous all over the world and created a great relationship between New Zealand and, and Munster over the years and a great respect between the two rugby paying powers. Obviously, one of the players that we did get during that period um, later on was uh, Dougie Howlett, one of the all-time try-scoring All Blacks uh, world rugby famous fantastic player fantastic guy uh, and now works for us here at Munster Rugby so I'm delighted to say Paulo he's waiting for you upstairs so he's looking forward to meeting you so me. let's get up and have not, a chat with him not only have I seen the behind the scenes the museum I'm about to meet a hero of mine and an absolute world-class player Johnny you're pulling out all the strings I can't wait for this one guys let's go Johnny I can't believe, lads, here I am in the home dressing room right here in Tomwood Park. Johnny told me Dougie's in here somewhere, lads, but I'm just going to... Oh, my God, lads. I can't believe this, lads, right? Could you imagine the stuff that goes on in here, lads? And this is where I'd be playing number nine. Ah! I Good to it. be back in at strings. Ah, the man himself. Jeez. Doug, how's it you going? You yourself go, bud. <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> Lads, my God, Doug, how are we doing, my man? How Great to see you. How are you getting on? This is an absolute honour. Guys, this is the leading try scorer for the All Blacks. Former Munster captain. General all-round amazing player. And Doug, tell me a little bit about you and what you're doing there. Well, that's a super introduction, Paul. It's great to be here. Uh, I'm from New Zealand and uh, I spent five years with Munster playing. We're doing some fantastic, exciting stuff. We're building a, a, a brand new training facility at the U University of Limerick. Wow. Our Green Core Academy, our new players are coming through and uh, uh, looking to, to be the next Paul O'Connells and Ronan O'Garas. There's a lot of exciting things going on. Because wow. you're the ambassador for, for, for Tolman now, for, for Monster, aren't you? For Monster Rugby, yeah. Wow. So as I say, I'm not helping by lacing my boots up, but I'm, uh, I'm helping behind the scenes. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, that's just amazing. Now, listen, I mean, I remember my famous, or my most vivid memory of you was I was standing in the terrace when Munster were playing the All Blacks, and all of a sudden, 
you took charge and stepped forward and did the most incredible hack and that you could have heard a pin drop before. It was just amazing. It was an incredible experience for you as well, I'd say. Yeah, it was one of those, uh, those memories that'll stay with me for a long time. Yeah. Um, and uh, especially against my former team, the All Blacks. Yeah. I was playing for Munster, doing a haka to welcome the All Blacks to play Munster at Thurman Park. Was there ever a standout moment for you where you just turned around and said, you know what, that was the best, best part of my professional career? Uh, yeah, obviously, growing up in New Zealand, you always wanted to play for the All Blacks. So I guess pulling on an All Black jersey for the first time was, was a huge memory. Uh, winning a Heineken Cup with Munster. Uh, doing a hacker against the All Blacks, yeah. you know, they're, they're probably the memories that, that spring to mind straight away. Crikey. And do you miss it? I, I do. Yeah. However, you know, I don't miss all the training, all the injuries, <laughs> all the sacrifice that you have to make and to put diet. yourself in that situation. The diet. Yeah. Uh, what in the name of God do you say to the team, like to say, lads, there's 25,000 people out there screaming on our back shoulder. You know, how, how do you get going? How do you rise the whole Absolutely. team? Absolutely. And, and the thing is, when you come into a room like this, all you have to do is sit down and look around and, and all the faces looking back at you, all your teammates. And that's one of the great things that I love about team sports is that uh, you're not in it on your own, you're doing it together. Wow. Well, I tell you what, Doug, I mean, this is an absolute honour for me. There's Irish people the world over that will be watching this on Irish TV. There's a saying that goes, whatever you do, never meet your heroes. I can tell you, lads, that's a load of crap. I've just met one of mine and I've had the most incredible chat with quite possibly one of the greatest rugby players to ever grace this stadium. Doug, you are an absolute gent, continued success, and I wish you all the best. Good man, Paul. Guys, I've cooked up trees, I've cooked up mountains surrounded in snow, but there's nobody can say they've cooked right here in the middle of the pitch of Toman Park with my good pal Johnny Lacey. Guys, there's a burger that is taking America by storm. It's sweeping across state by state called the Juicy Lucy, where they get a slab of meat and they get a slab of cheese and put another bit of meat on top of it. So guess what I'm calling this? It's the Juicy Lacey. Of course it's the Juicy Lacey and he loves to hear that. But I've got minced venison, fried off onions, garlics, whole grain mustard, and a couple of other things. But I wanna show you, cause this is just too special to me talking crap, cooking. I wanna showcase the amazing Toman Park and Johnny. So I'm gonna mix all this up, Johnny. So come here to me, you know the way like say, in the lines, there's lads sitting at home and they have no idea whether they're on the team, how does it work for like to be picked to represent Ireland for in the Rugby World Cup? How we got go? phone calls from the head of world referee and Joe Judge who's from France. Yeah. And basically I was on my way to uh, referee Northampton and Claremont in the Heineken Cup quarter final and sitting at the airport I just got a phone call and uh, it's fantastic to be one of 12 and George Clancy, my refereeing colleague from Ireland as well. So there's two Irish refs out of 12, two which Irish is refs. an amazing for a small country like Ireland. Uh, so. Wow, here yeah. now, come here. We need to walk and talk and work and talk. Bit of salt in there, please, Johnny. A Little bit of pepper mills. And I'm just gonna turn over the burgers. You can see the cheese oozing out of the burgers, guys. It's absolutely beautiful. So let's pick these over. Oh, absolutely fantastic. If you're cooking these at home, guys, I can't come up to Toman Park and give them an old tiny little burger. There has to be a bit of bite on this. So I'd say cook these in the frying pan for a couple of minutes and finish them off in the oven. But well, we are looking absolutely fantastic. How does a referee like take full control of a game? Well, first of all, when a prop comes to me and he says, I'm sure, I always say, yes, I am. <laughs> I um, <laughs> I know, no, but uh, rugby players are, are pretty, pretty good to accept decisions. Obviously, they have a mechanism that's been in rugby over many, many generations of players where the captain has the right to speak to the referee and not the rest of the players. Bit of cheese in between a slab of meat, by the way, guys, and a bit of slab of meat on top. That's the Juicy Lacey. The Juicy Lacey. I told you you'd love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think, uh, for me, your first international, but my first Six Nations, that, that's, that's the biggest rugby tournament in the world. And get to referee in that, in the Millennium Stadium with the roof closed in front of 82,000 people was, was a standout memory, which I'll, I'll never forget. Wow. And so, just, just guys, when you're cooking these burgers at home, they're so big, just don't be afraid. I always tell you, just give it a little touch and see, you want it to firm up a little bit. Sometimes they're a bit soft, so you'll know they're not cooked. But when you see the cheese oozing out like this, you know you're nearly there and you're nearly on to winner. I just throw a, bake, a bit of bacon inside as well because there clearly wasn't enough fat in what I put into that frying pan. I'll be able to eat it. Johnny, so you have to mind the figure? Uh, we, we might make an exception today. Today's a day <laughs> off. But I mean, like, when you think about it, I said, you're covering, if not the same, if not more ground, to a lot of the players that are on the pitch. You're, you're following the ball all the way around. We wear GPS tractor units. We cover an average between six and eight kilometers in a match. 
Uh, some of that's high speed running under pressure. You have 30 big guys, 15 going at each other hard and uh, you've got to be there to make those decisions at the, at, at the right time. So it's yeah. a, getting from A to B is critical to be the first guy, nearly second guy on the scene to make sure that you can see as, as much as you possibly can to make the right decision for the game, you know? So you just get your bun. I'm going to put a little bit of tomato on it, Johnny. Is that all right? Delicious. A little bit of my secret recipe relish. I'm an easy guy to feed. I know, I know that. Anything. I know that. And you, you know one of my personal favourites is venison. Absolutely. Johnny's got the special done already, the Johnny Lacey special. That's two, bur two dishes I've after name and after. A little bit of onion, a little bit of lettuce on top. Put that down there for one sec now. I'm delighted I've come here today because we always give so much exposure to our players and our team and all that kind of stuff. But for me, I think we've also got professional people representing us in the middle of the pitch. So this is a huge, a huge day for me, I have to admit. Johnny, look at that. Wow. We put a little stick just to keep it all there together. I'd say we're probably better off not taking the shot of this on camera because it's just going to go everywhere. Johnny, I give you the juicy lacy and on behalf of everyone in the country, guys, I wish you such great luck in the Rugby World Cup this year. I know you'll do brilliant. Looks delicious. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. That's delicious. That's good? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Guys, what an absolute amazing day we've had here with Munster Rugby Club and in Toma Park. I don't know when's the next time I'm going to be back here, so there's no way I'm leaving this pitch until I do this. Johnny! Guys, I am still on such a high of being in Toman Park, but Trevo Travels doesn't hang around in one spot too often. And I've come to the most beautiful, quite possibly the most iconic village right here in Adair to meet another brilliant, how great of a job do I have? I go around the country, meet me mates and having a laugh and they pay me for it. So let's go in and meet Wade. You're gonna love this one, guys. There's the man himself. Wade, how's it going? Hey, Paul, how are you, see you, man. You too. Place looking fantastic as oh, always. Oh, yeah, yeah, We're try, we try anyway, we try. I oh, know, geez, you do more than that, <laughs> hey? Do you know what? As much as I love inside, it's a cracking day outside. Will definitely. we try and do a little bit of a dish outside and have definitely, a little Definitely, definitely. Because yeah. I'm starved. We've just <laughs> after coming from Toman Park, so I'm looking forward to this. Good I'm stuff. off, by the way. You're doing all the cooking. Yeah, I know, I yeah. know, I know, I know. I'll, I'll, I'll try, I'll try to be as good as you, but I, <laughs> I, I, know. I don't know if I have as much yeah, practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We go back a long time, guys. This guy, if you, think, if you think I'm full of it, wait until you get a load of this guy. <laughs> Let's go, Wado. <laughs> guys, here we are in one of the most iconic villages in this country, Adair. And if you want to get to my restaurant in Kerry, there's a good chance you need to go past Wade's restaurant, 1826, right here in Adair. Wade, I'm starved. We've been filming all day, and you promised me a brilliant lunch. Listen, over the years, I've broken many, many a promise to you, Paul, but this time I'm not going to let you down. Okay? I love it. What have so we got going on? We, we're going to do a, a nice summary one-pot wonder of, um, this is some hoggett neck love fillet. It. So we're going to stew this and finish it off with some nice summery vegetables that are perfectly in season, some broad beans, fresh peas, we have a lovely salsa verde here, which will... Beautiful. Lamb goes really well with anything green. I love it. And do you know what I love as well? That you're using the neck. Because so many people think all you can do is the fillet of lamb or that kind of stuff. You're about to get a master class by a master chef on how to cook a beautiful piece of lamb. I want you going into the butchers asking for the neck so you can do this. Wade, can I help or are you going to do everything? Well, I'm going to do everything. I like that. Uh, you, you know, it's your, it's your day off today, you know, and I, as I said earlier, I have big shoes to fill. So. <laughs> I love it. So listen, I've just taken the lamb fillet and diced it up. Um, I've dusted it in a little bit of flour, seasoned it, taken it off the pan, 
And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start building up the rest of our flavors. So I have about two onions in here. Beautiful. By the way, guys, this is right on the main street in there. There are tourists everywhere. How are we doing, guys? <laughs> You're gonna absolutely love this one. So we're just gonna seal off our lamb, our, our onions. If, um, in here I have three or four cloves of chopped garlic, okay? Big garlic, man. Three or four cloves of chopped garlic. So we wanna get this softening. And listen to me, come here. 1826, where did the name come from? It's you see this beautiful cottage here yeah. right behind you? That's when that was built. Wow. It was built by the first Lord of Dunraven in 1826 for the staff of the manor. My the God. manor is just there. So yeah, this was staff houses for the manor. So About two weeks ago, there's two cottages down below, which very unfortunately went on fire. And of course, we immediately thought of Wade and Elaine straight away. But Wade, it was scary how close it was, but thankfully, yeah, the damage was limited. It was limited. Unfortunately, yeah. two family homes got burnt down to the ground. Um, two beautiful uh, thatched cottages, but um, we'll all club together and, and get the people sorted. So hopefully Fantastic. in about six months time, they'll all be, all be back, in action. back in action. Very good. So, we can get the smell already of the onions and garlic. So in here, I've just got a little bit of Herbe de Provence. Beautiful. Um, you could use dried oregano, you could use dried rosemary, whatever you want. Okay. And then we, normally we get this softened right down. You'd want to cook this for about eight to 10 minutes. Great. To get your onions softened down, but we don't have that much time, Paul, and you're starving, no right? <laughs> so in with our lamb. Lovely. And that's, as, as you said, just pan fried off. Look at this, guys. It's just been pan fried off. Dust it in a little bit of flour, not too much in the pan at the same time, so it doesn't sweat. You yeah, want to get exactly. the crust on it, exactly. isn't it? Exactly, nice crust. There's a thousand chefs who told you all this before, lads. If you're not paying attention to them, you should be paying attention to me. <laughs> in we go with the pot. Did he use his fingers? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in with the lamb again. Listen, if somebody's celiac or somebody's gluten-free, yeah. take away the flour. You know, you can add, you can, don't need flour. And then what you can do is, when you build up your sauce with your stock, yeah. add a few spuds in there. Perfect. That'll take I it love for it. you. I you love know? it. So we'll get that nice and soft. This guy is good, guys. I told you, that's why we're here in 1826. A tomato puree. Bit of tomato puree. So we coat our veg, coat our lamb and our onions with our tomato puree. Get, let that cook down for about a minute or two. Okay. In here, I have. I'd like normally I'd like to be a bit of a Keith Floyd, you know, a bit of. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, well, a, a, a that's going to happen afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so. About half a litre of white wine. Of white wine? Dry white wine. Give that a stir for me there, Paul. But come here to me. Do you know the way, there's fellas at home there now, Wade, right? And they're going, what the hell did he say? Dry white wine, sweet, what? Does it matter? Is, will Just, anybody notice? They won't really notice, because you're going to cook the wine off anyway, yeah. you know what I mean? But that but, is the difference, why you taste the difference in this guy's restaurant, because he never forgets what to use. And then a little bit, about 200 ml, 200 grams of chopped tomatoes. Just tinned, shop bought. Perfect. Chopped tomatoes, a little pinch of salt. And guys, how many times do I tell you, use flaked rock salt? What's he using? You see, I don't just make these things up. <laughs> <laughs> you make a lot up. I do, this. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and in here we have chicken stock. Listen, we make our own chicken stock. We make all our, our stocks um, ourselves. But listen, if you want to use a cube, use a yeah. cube at home. You know, there's nothing wrong with when you're cooking at home. Absolutely, either. things have gotten but so good, they really improved The their... best thing to do though is, if you roast a chicken on Sunday, make a stock from the bones. You know, that's what you're going to get. Perfect. So in here with um, about, a litre and a half of chicken stock. Lovely. We're just going to give it a blast of pepper. And then what you want to do is bring that up to the boil. Yeah. Okay. And you know the way you guys on TV always go, and here's a little something I <laughs> no, prepared earlier. earlier. <laughs> you get this ready, you bring it up to the boil, put a lid on it, a preheated oven at 160 degrees. Okay. For about two hours. And then after the last, for, for about two hours, after two hours, take the lid off and give it another 30 minutes okay. to lay it off. So Kieran, who's worked at the restaurant since day one, Perfect. is we'll, gonna bring out that little one we'll that we move prepared, this over here. repaired earlier. So if Kieran can bring that over now. Lovely stuff. And come here to me, how long are you open? Thank you, Kieran. Thanks, Kieran. So wait, did you make that or did Kieran make that? I made that. <laughs> I love it. How long are you here, two so years? So we're, we're open two years, yeah. We opened uh, in May, two years ago. And, and is there a award that you haven't won? Because you pretty much sweep the board every time. I mean, Twitter goes mad. Chef Wade has done it again, lads. I tell you, yourself and Elaine, you, you, you gotta be so proud of what you got going oh, on yeah, here, lads. Yeah, oh, listen, I, I a massive achievement. We, we've won Best Restaurant in Munster for the last two years running, even though wow. we're only open two years. But uh, a, a, a restaurant is only as good as its team, you know? We've got a great team of staff. Brilliant. They're all, you know, they're, they've all bought into the idea and, you know, that's, that's what it is. So here's our lamb, you can see it's, and it smells oh, wow. delicious. 
and then you have your own your all your your stock and your tomatoes and everything so that's two and a half hours in the oven meats so, nice and tender meats nice and tender okay just easy to chew with more more people coming to join us now how are we doing guys big so, hello <laughs> you're on irish tv hello beautiful so back in here we've got some fava beans fava that beans. are just uh, broad beans you can use we use fresh ones, we blanch them and, and uh, shell them ourselves. And they're a bit sweet as well at this yeah. time of year, aren't they? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You can use tinned ones if you yeah. want again. These are fresh peas. Okay. We've shelled and blanched. So in there with those as well. And then just some asparagus. Like I said, lamb goes well with all things green. I like that. I'm going to remember that one myself. And these so, only take a minute or two. Yeah. You basically just want to warm them just through, really. Just warm them through. Yeah. And then, um, so we give it a good mix in. And now here I have the finish, it's salsa verde. Fantastic. So basically in here we have mint, parsley, basil, uh, uh, Dijon mustard, anchovy, and rapeseed oil, and a little bit of um, red wine vinegar. Lovely. So we'd actually normally dress the plate with this, okay. but it's actually really nice for just finishing. Straight in. Yeah. Fantastic. You, you notice I didn't add, like we have loads of mint and everything yeah, going yeah. here, so we use it. But I didn't add, I, the only herbs I added were the dried herbs, so this is the fresh herbs at the end. If you if you put this in at the start, you're just going to cook it out and you're yeah, going to lose, lose, that, yeah. lose that intense flavour. Guys, so, I keep saying, if they could only invent smell of vision the whole of Adair <laughs> is coming to a standstill because the smell of this dish is just wafting through the whole village. It's absolutely incredible. So we just mix that in. I'm just going to taste it for a little bit of, see if we need any more salt and pepper. You can see the way our salsa now has yeah. mixed in with the with the lamb. Oh man, that's good. Good. I told you I had big shoes to fill today, you know, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure if I can do this, you can do this, Trevo, yeah? Well, in fairness, I have got a master class here now. I might have to give you an old call later on to say, how exactly did you finish it off? But this looks absolutely beautiful. It was like when I used to copy my, my uh, assignments in college off of you, you know, <laughs> so you can copy my dish now, yeah? Ha! I tell you how this works, right? <laughs> Myself and Wade, right, we were in college together. We go back an awful long time. The one day of the year that I went in, all of a sudden there was no sign of Wade. And then I'm sitting in a pub in London. What was it called there? Um, Waxy O'Connor's. Waxy O'Connor's, that's the one. All of a sudden, this guy walks by with a tray of food Chefing in Waxy O'Connor, isn't it unbelievable, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Helping out a friend of mine who was the GM there for a while. Yeah, I was eight years in London now. College yeah. wasn't for me. No, I have that gone makes two back. Of us. I have gone back since, uh, but, uh, no, you know, I was working in the industry like yourself from a young age, yeah. so, um, you know, college wasn't for me, but, yeah. you know, it's, so I was eight years in London, then I went to the States, and then now I'm here with Elaine in 1826, two years. Yeah. So, Guys, we're on the front steps of the restaurant here. There's a main road going by there. If you love the sound of this man's voice and you can't hear us too well, you're just gonna have to come down and try the restaurant. Because <laughs> he's here all the time. Not like these only celebrity chefs who are never in their place. Wade's working here all the time, if all right? If we're not if myself and Elaine aren't here, we're not open. That's the way it is. So wow, I love it. Our lamb is done. You beautiful. can see our beautiful green beans, uh, our peas, our fava beans, our asparagus, everything like that. You could serve this with a big bowl of creamy mash. Oh, or, yeah. You know, even if you wanted to just do a potato salad, you could yeah. do that if you wanted. So that's it, Paul. I promised you lunch. Absolutely. There you go. Fantastic. Up. Well, I tell you what, guys. They always say, mmm, ah, that's fantastic. This is fantastic. <laughs> we don't need to waffle here, Wade. Sure, you we can don't. smell it. You, you can, can smell it. it. But I'm telling you guys, trust me when I say get down to a dare, come into this restaurant because you will not be disappointed. And it is quite possibly one of the top restaurants in the entire country, not just Limerick, not just a dare. In the Second, after you know the other place. <laughs> Let's try this. A little guys. place down yeah, in some, some little place down there. Let's get stuck into this, guys. That is seriously good. That is seriously good. Wade, you're dead right. You never let me down. Pleasure as always, buddy. Outstanding. Pleasure as always. Guys, what an end to quite possibly one of the most amazing days ever. Toman Park and then right here in Adair with my long lost buddy Wade. You were fantastic, my man. You were brilliant. Absolutely love it. Elaine, thank you so much. What an amazing restaurant you guys have. But I tell you what, lads, look what I'm getting for a little takeaway. A doggy bag, because that stew was so damn good. I'm having this tonight before I go to bed, because lads, come back next week. I'm still on my travels and you're going to love this show. Guys, you were amazing. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon. See you Keep soon. up the good work, guys. Bye.